to uh, give some folks some pointers on basic outlining, and especially just how to uh, actually do the outline in a Google Doc. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at this essay. And this comes out of our uh, textbook for English 1302. And this is one of the big sample essays that uh, I like to use in class in 1302 uh, because it's a really good example of using uh, research to drive analysis. So if you're watching this video for 1302, then you're going to read this essay or have already probably read this essay as an example of the kind of paper that you'll write in 1302. If you're watching this for 1301, then this is just a uh, analytical essay, the kind that we'll write in 1301, but also using um, a, a research to drive that analysis. So this is a sample essay written by a student named Sarah Roberts. And you see that she's got her um, MLA heading there. And in this essay, she's going to talk about this short story, Boys and Girls. And uh, she uses a lot of great research to come up with a really deep thesis uh, about the characters in this story and the gender roles of those characters. Now, what we're going to do is an exercise I like to do, which is I call just reverse outlining. And basically, we're going we're gonna to look at this essay and reverse engineer what this author's outline probably looked like. And I find that's helpful to understand the organization of essays. I recommend that as a, as a step, just analyze the organization of essays. But I, I'm going to do this also to just show you the nuts and bolts of, OK, how do I do an outline in Google Docs? So <clears throat> if I read this paper here, I see that early in this paper, she is talking about um, the idea of an initiation story. And that's really central to um, the idea that she's setting up in this paper. Now, if I go to my outline here, the first part of any outline is Roman numeral one, right? So I'm going to put Roman numeral one. And once, as soon as I type in capital I period, and then once I hit this, hit this space, watch what happens. It's like magic. So Google Docs <laughs> figures out, oh, OK, you're trying to do an outline. So it's going to start auto formatting for me. So that's real helpful. So I need to come up with. Um, a label for this Roman numeral. Now, there are two types of outlines. There are sentence outlines and there are subject outlines. I asked for subject outlines in my class. Sentence outlines are very similar. Um, they just give more because you're, you're fleshing out entire thoughts for each point on the outline. So it's a more developed plan. And really, if you do a thorough sentence outline, you're more than halfway to your paper because you've got all those complete thoughts in there already expressed. You pretty much just have to go and kind of uh, edit and, and work in transitions and, and fill in some of the blanks, maybe. Uh, but sentence outlines are good for planning uh, at earlier stages. And I find a little bit more accessible. So that's all I ask for. If you want to do a, a sentence outline, that's fine. But subject outlines are, are a little bit easier to, to do early on. Um, now, the key thing is don't mix them. Don't do part subject, part sentence. So if you're doing a subject outline, Keep it to just descriptions. Don't put in complete sentences. So here in my Google Doc for my outline, or I'm pretending I'm Sarah Roberts, as you can see, for Sarah's outline, um, I have my first Roman numeral. Now, some people will do this. They'll just type introduction. OK, there, that's my introduction. Eh, it's really better to think about, OK, what is the important uh, idea or ideas that I'm going to need to convey in my introduction? So again, I come back over here. And this introduction seems to be really interested in this idea of initiation story. So I think that this whole section of the paper that I'm designating with Roman numeral one is about this concept of the initiation story. And in fact, if I read on, if I keep reading, um, I get pretty much to her core thesis, which is right down here. Uh, doesn't highlight very well. Rather than being either a male or female initiation story, boys and girls is both. Also notice that this thesis doesn't come until the end of page two, that this author took a long time building up her key ideas. And so the core idea of her paper doesn't come until after the first paragraph. So that's an important note here. When I put a Roman numeral for my outline, 
it doesn't necessarily mean each Roman numeral is one paragraph. The Roman numeral is a section of the paper. And for this one, I'm going to label it with that key thesis idea that boys and girls is a dual initiation story. So that's my description of the first section of the paper. And when I hit enter, Google Docs is going to say, OK, you want a Roman numeral too. And so if I go back and I look at, OK, like that's my first section. What is my second section of the paper about? And if I look here, then I see that the next major topic in the essay is this idea of androgyny. Uh, she talks about how the characters of the narrator and her little brother named Laird in this story are basically androgynous early in the story. They're not really um, you know, completely locked into male and female gender stereotypes yet. Uh, and in fact, that starts to happen through the course of the story. So this idea of androgyny is real important in her analysis, and she spends a couple of paragraphs working on that. So I'm going to say that that's the second section of the paper right there. And then I can go on from there. Okay. Now, of course, in a good outline, I'm going to want to look at more than just the big Roman numerals. Like, you may start with just the big Roman numeral sections like this uh, and plan all those out first, but at some point you're going to need to come in here to each subsection and say, hmm, okay, but within Roman numeral 1, I know I need to plan for some more work and plan for some more ideas. So, I mean, if I look back here at Roman numeral 1, I said we're going to cover this little paragraph here and this whole page. So I'm going to have to specify some of the ideas in here. And so when I go back and I look at it, I'm like, OK, well, you know what? Uh, I've got this idea from Marcus about how basic initiation stories work. But then I've also got this really important insight from my research uh, from Ginsburg about the characteristics of a female initiation story. And I go through all sorts of different female initiation story elements here. So I'm going to break those out in my Roman numeral 1. So I go back up to Roman numeral 1. I put my cursor at the end here. And I hit Enter again. And uh-oh, now the problem is it's giving me a Roman numeral 2. OK, all right, so what do I do? What do I do? Well, all you have to do to tell it, no, I don't want a new Roman numeral. I want to do a subsection. I want to do a subpoint and go to A, is I just hit Tab. Boop. So I hit Tab, and now I'm on A. And looking at you know, the information that I need to cover, or looking at the information Sarah Arts did cover, I'm going to say, OK, well, A, the key idea here is this definition of an initiation story, which, by the way, I'm going to go ahead and include where in my research that's coming from. That's going to be important. Now, very important note on your subpoints. If you have an A, you have to have a B. If you have a 1, you have to have a 2. Now, you can have more. You can have A, B, C, D, E, F. GHI, although if you're going that far, you probably aren't thinking about the hierarchy and you probably need to make some of those subpoints of subpoints. But you have to have at least two subpoints. If you're not breaking out su two subpoints, then your A isn't really a subpoint at all. It's, it's going to be somehow just renaming your one. Or if you have a, only a one underneath a B, say, it's really just renaming the B. So that's, uh, that's an important safety tip. Now, as it happens here, I already looked and I saw, oh no, I definitely have more than just an A and a, a, I have a B about this Ginsburg. And Ginsburg was talking about the differences between, or differences of a female initiation story. And again, that's coming out of my research. I'm going to keep track of that in my outline. That's going to make it easier for me later. And so that's another um, important element there. Uh, so that's a B. And as it happens, I think that um, if I look at the end of this section, um, I'm going to see that in building up to the thesis, the research also talks about this idea of highlighting the almost invisible societal forces which shape children. So that's kind of really important to my thesis as well, or Sarah Roberts' thesis. I'm pretending to be Sarah Roberts. So I'm going to put that in there too. And I'm going to put invisible social forces shape both the narrator and her brother. And that quote, of course, is coming from Goldman. So again, I want to keep track of my research here because that makes it a lot easier down the road. So that's pretty good. I'm pretty happy with that, except that, you know, gosh, I have a lot of information. 
or rather Sarah did, a lot of information about Ginsburg and her ideas about the female initiation story, all these in here. So what I can also do is I can come up here to the end of B, hit enter. No, I don't want to see. I'm going to hit tab again, okay, tab. And then I can break out some of these specifics. Women's roles are defined relative to men in these initiation stories and that there is a transition from being androgynous, which we know is an important concept later in the, in the essay, and then also that there's uh, often in these stories a sense of disillusionment, which again, cannot get the second L in there for some reason, disillusionment and disappointment in these stories. So these are elements from my research about Ginsburg, and we see it in Roberts' actual paper that she talks about all of them right here. So I'm going to represent that in my fake outline from her essay right here. Now, um, I can do the same thing with um, the next point about androgyny. Uh, and I can just keep breaking out these subpoints. Now, one important thing that I haven't uh, pointed out to you yet, just in the mechanics of this, is I told you, you have to tab to create the next level. Like if I go here and I want some subpoints under three, then I just tab and they become A. And underneath that, I would tab and become this, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but wait, what if I don't, what if I make a mistake? Or what if I want to go back, say I'm uh, doing a C here and I want to add not a D, but a Roman numeral two. Well, then hold down Shift Tab, and it goes back to that level. Okay, that's Shift Tab. So, see, that's what I'll do right here. If I Shift Tab, boom, 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 all the way back to four. But I don't need a four here. I'm good. So, but so basically, to work the automatic formatting that Google Docs is going to be doing for you, you both Tab or then Shift Tab to go back. So it's really easy. Once you uh, get the hang of it, you'll, you'll remember that. And then your formatting is all taken care of there. And of course, your final outline, like I said, you can keep going. Like here, I've got some subpoints under androgyny, et cetera, et cetera. Remember that you always need a two if you have a one. If there's not two subpoints to break out, then you just want to reword the point above. Uh, and here, I've got A, B, C, D, et cetera, et cetera. So that's basically how you outline. And uh, I just wanted to have that little how-to video in case anyone was really unfamiliar with it. Um, obviously, lots more resources you can find to help you with the outlining. As always, I do uh, recommend the OWL. They've got some sample outlines and a lot of discussion of outlining. Uh, your writer's reference, uh, your hacker guide for your writer's reference will have uh, outlining tips as well. And as always, you know, if you have any questions, just let me know. But I just wanted to throw that video out there as a quick how-to. So there you go.